Hey, what's going on YouTube? Derek James, GovKid Method here. And today we have our seventh consecutive YouTube Live. I'm so really happy and proud to say that. When I first started doing the first few lives, I wasn't sure how long I was going to do it. I was kind of just testing the water. Um, and consecutively, every week we've gone live here on YouTube um, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, I promise I'll have a more, you know, kind of standard schedule going forward. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm super happy and thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to be discussing, as you see on the, the, the thumbnail, um, as advertised, our source of thought notice is really worth it. Now, that's a little bit more of a detail type question. So as we get into the topic in just a few minutes, um, don't worry, I will, you know, explain really quickly in a nutshell what a source of thought notice is. Um, so that if you're if you're new here or you're new to government contracting, you don't know what we're talking about. I don't want you to be left in the dark the entire conversation. So anybody who is on the newer end, um, I will get you up to speed. But then we will, uh, for, for everybody, get into answering the question and to the meat of the topic, which is, is it really worth, you know, responding to source of thought notices? Is it worth your time? Is it worth the effort? Is it worth your um, distraction of focus? And I will say uh, the answer is not so obvious. So I have talked about source of thoughts kind of passively um, on previous uh, live sessions and in my pre-recorded YouTube videos here on the channel, but I'm gonna be sharing some of the stuff today that I haven't maybe talked about. Um, so really what that means is we will be going through a pros and cons list. There are cons and there are pros to doing this. Um, and then after all that, we will arrive at some sort of conclusion. And again, it may not be the conclusion that you might think I would say, so um, all the more reason to stay with us and stick through to the end with YouTube Live. Um, and then we will be getting to uh, some, some questions at the end as well. Um, but I'm just going to take care of a few administrative issues. I upgraded from a cup to a, a Yeti mug. So that's, that's pretty cool. So you'll hopefully be seeing me use this for the you know, next couple of weeks. But anybody who's been following my journey and what's going on with my life, you know, I'm about to embark on this crazy relocation from Michigan down to Alabama. Um, so just another weekly update here. Um, my parents are actually leaving tomorrow. Their house is packed. Their stuff is already in a pod. It's already in transit on its way. So they are going down. Um, I and my family here, um, as you can see, I'm not in the camper anymore. Now I'm back at my girlfriend's house. Uh, I have a wall instead of a camper backdrop today. Um, we have one week next Saturday. We will be in route also. Uh, our truck comes to pick up all of our stuff this Tuesday. And then I'll literally, we will all be living out of duffel bags. Things are going to get really interesting because I still plan to try to do a Facebook Live again next week. Um, it may just be kind of uh, unique. I'm not, I'm not sure because uh, that that Saturday, next Saturday, we will be on the road. Um, so those of you that have been following the journey, that's what's going on. Things are getting very real. I'm sitting in a, a house that's really like packed in boxes. I just ran out of the pod to come do this YouTube live. So my life is super crazy, but um, I'm still committing and dedicating to you to keep this schedule going, um, especially our YouTube lives. So, you know, thank you for bearing with me. You know, in October, things should calm down um, and we'll get we'll tighten up the schedule and things will be a lot more regular um, as well. So that's the, the moving update. Um, and then also just want to say a special thanks to all of you who were on last week's YouTube live, um, especially those of you who contributed to the channel during last week's live session. I super appreciate that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we enabled the super chats and the super stickers just as a way to um, kind of invest back into the channel. So I appreciate all of you um, for uh, doing that last week and just showing up again. So um, let's check the chat here. Uh, Black Dog, what's going on? Good to see you again. Boki, what is up? Boyan, um, we have uh, Colin. Uh, thank you for the info, Derek. You are so welcome. And then Yada Montrell, hello again to you. Thanks for joining uh, again, Yada Montrell. Um, so if you're watching this on replay, if we're, I'm talking into the future, feel free to type replay in the comments um, because we do want to share uh, some love to those who are watching this on replay. I know everybody can't be here for today's session. Um, if today is your first time, feel free to put first time into the chat. And then um, I know we got a number of folks that I just mentioned that are uh, returning uh, feel free to put returning in the chat if you want, but uh, you don't have to if you don't want. I, I pretty much know who you guys are. Um, uh, Tracy, uh, hi, everyone. What's going on, Tracy? Thanks for being here as well. And Dana Welsh, first time. Appreciate all your efforts. Hey, Dana, what is going on? Glad to see you here. Alicia Curtis returning. 
What is up, Alicia? Um, I think, Alicia, you just uh, followed me from the Facebook. So that's awesome. Thanks. For those of you who didn't know that are on here, um, we've been going live on Facebook for about 20 minutes to do a pregame show. Um, it's a little bit uh, less formal, less structured. Talk a little bit about the topic and just kind of hang out. Um, so we've been doing that in the Facebook group. So anybody who wants to do that in the future, um, just join our uh, government contracting Facebook group and you'll be able to chime in on that. And Robert, a well-born first time. Robert, welcome. And, and again, uh, Dana, welcome uh, both of you for being first timers here. Welcome to the, the official community here on YouTube. I'm looking forward to your thoughts on this topic. Absolutely. It was a topic that I did want to get to, but um, I didn't want to go too deep without uh, providing a little bit of background info to get everybody up to speed on what the heck a source of thought even is. So we'll just spend a, a few minutes um, talking about that. So if you're not familiar with how this works, um, the session will last for about an hour, maybe an hour 15. The first hour or first hour, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't go two hours. The first half of the session, maybe 30 or 40 minutes will be dedicated to this topic. And again, today's topic, our source of thought notice is really worth responding to, okay? So that's gonna be the first half. If you have any questions as it relates to today's topic, as I'm going through it, um, I will kind of take breaks, like what I'm gonna do right now. And, you know, catch my breath and, and take a drink. Um, but if you have any questions as it relates to the topic, put those in the chat as soon as you have them. And then after about 30 or 40 minutes, when we finish the topic, we will take, you know, 20 minutes or so to uh, answer any other GovCon related questions that are maybe not related to today's topic, but they are related to government contracting. There's so many, you know, issues, blocks people are running into, or just general questions. I find that we have um, a little bit of a chunk of time after the session to get to those. So if you have those type of questions, save those for the end. And if you have any questions related to the topic, feel free to put those in as you have them. So without further ado now, I think we're all ready. Um, let's go ahead and get into the uh, today's topic. Just real fast, let me just check, check the chat one more time. Natural QD, hello back again. Yes, I remember, welcome. Um, uh, Kim, what is going on? Kim, uh, aka Kimbala, hey everyone, I'm here, awesome. Catherine, uh, I've watched your videos before, very helpful, thank you. Awesome, Catherine, what is up? Black Dog Home Builders, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you for all your support for the channel, uh, Black Dog. I very much appreciate it. And I love this Bravo Fox sticker, that's really, really cool, thank you so much. Um, what's going on, Vince Chris? We've got Emmanuel Alonza. Hello, everyone. I know you are back. I recognize your name, Emmanuel. Um, you had some good questions last week. Jordan Gibbs, what's up, Jordan? How I hope you are doing well, uh, returning. And then we have uh, to our Lori, first timer. Lori, welcome. We've got uh, three or four uh, new folks uh, in the chat here um, that are first timers. So welcome to our GovCon community. Thanks for checking out the YouTube channel as we get into government contracting. So I think we're all caught up. Let's go ahead and get into the topic. And just let me catch my breath, guys, because I'm trying to trying to get through everything here. Um, so a source of sought notice. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, source of sought notice. Some of you may know that there's four stages of a bid, and the source of sought notice is that first stage. Um, we talked in a little bit of length in our pregame show. I won't go in as much depth right now. But if you don't know, a source of sought is the way that the government gauges for interested vendors for a bid that's coming out in the future. So, for example, if, you know, there was a movie that was coming out, you know, Avengers or something, um, and they just like said, OK, here it is. You just go to the box office one day and it just came out. It would have a very poor turnout because there was no hype. There was no launch. There was no you know, notification ahead of time. That's what we're talking about today. That's what a source of sod is. It's the first stage of a bid. So um, it's easy to not respond to that because you're like, oh, well, I don't want to waste my time responding to a source of sod because I want to wait for the bid to come out. And then I'll respond to that because then I can actually, you know, win something. Um, but there's some pros and cons. And that's really what we're going to be getting into today. So for any of you who don't know what a source of sod is, it's that beginning stage you can't win an award by responding to it. Um, and it does require a little bit of a response. So that's why there's some pros and cons related to it as a business decision, a strategy decision for your business development activities. So um, that's really why I used to ask myself this question, like why am I responding to these? When I worked for the government contractor that I worked for, um, 
I would spend a lot of time sometimes responding to them. And I would kind of question like, why am I doing this? Um, but I know a lot of people don't even know what a source of thought is. And now you do a little bit. So if you were to go into beta.sam.gov, toggle down to contract opportunities, and then go to the left hand of the screen and go to notice type, you could scroll down and you would see something in that list called the source of thought. And that's the first, first stage of a bid. And essentially, it's just the government's wanting you to um, let them know if you would be interested in the bid when it comes out in the future. That way, they can help shape the requirement. This way, they can know if there's even any vendors that are going to be interested before they go through all the effort of putting the bid together. So this is their way of doing some market research before they do the thing that's going to cost a lot of time and money, right? Um, and so they, they need you. They need industry, small business owners to respond to the source of thought notice to let them know that you know you are interested that you're going to play ball if they decide to put this whole game on okay so um, i don't really want to explain it much more than that um that is in a nutshell in essence what a, a source of thought is looking to gauge the reason for it so hopefully you guys are with me if you're with me let me know in the chat um if if it still doesn't make sense um natural qt says what about a source of thought rfq that's not really a thing. I'm not sure if you're a natural cutie. I'm not sure if you're referring to something else, but um, there's not really a source of thought request for quote. If it's in the source of thought stage, they can't award based off that. So it would have to be in a full blown solicitation or, or pre solicitation. Um, so a source of thought uh, RFQ, it's kind of like an oxymoron, like, like big little, um, they're, they're kind of conflicting things. So um, I know the government will sometimes put paperwork, attach documents uh, out there and they'll attach like statements of work. They'll put stuff that would be in a bid sometimes and they'll put it within the source of sought documents and it's a little confusing. I don't know why they do that. Um, so um, that may relate to what you're describing. Um, but, but yeah, so hopefully that answers the question for you. So um, why would you respond to a, a source of sought or maybe why would you not want to? I'm going to talk about some of the cons. Let's start with the cons. That way we can kind of end on the pros uh, on a little bit of a high note, and then we can compare them and talk about the, the conclusion. Um, so some of the cons. Responding to a source of thought notice on beta.sam.gov, if you take the time to respond to it, you can't win an award, okay? You're not going to win an award from doing that. You won't get a contract. So if you're saying, I only want to spend my time doing things, where I can win an award directly from it, then you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't really want to respond to any source of thought. There'd be no point um, unless you're an 8A company, but that's a totally different strategy. I don't even want to confuse you with. Um, but if you were to say that to me, I would say maybe you should broaden your strategy because only responding to things that you can bid on and not going deep with some of these other things might be a, uh, might be a weak, weak link in your strategy. And we'll talk about that during the pros. But that is, a, that is a con. You can't win a contract from responding to a source of sought notice, okay? It's you just throwing your hat on the ring, saying, I'm interested when and if the bid comes out and bidding on it, okay? Um, next thing, obviously, it takes a little bit of time to respond. Uh, the response usually consists of uh, tailoring your company's capability statement so, so many people say, I have a capability statement. What do I do with it? Or what is the point of a capability statement? This is one of the top two or three uses for a capability statement. You attach it in your response to a source of sought notice. This will show contracting that you are a serious player. It shows them that you got a Cajun and Dunn's number, you're registered in SAM, um, and you've even gone through the effort of identifying some NAICS codes and maybe any sharing any experience that your company has in the commercial space or even in the government contracting space. All that information is captured on your capability statement. In addition to you know, your, your set asides and maybe some other competitive advantage type things. So why would you wanna go in and, and, and tailor all of that um, if you don't win a bid? You know, you're gonna tailor that and you're, you're probably gonna answer a few questions. That's the second thing in the source of sought. They want your capability statement tailored and they may give you a few questions to answer. So it takes time to respond. That's bullet point number two as a con. It takes time to respond. And these are the two things 
that you need to include in your response. The third thing that I put on my list, because I, I know it really much pertains, you know, a lot of it pertains to me and probably a lot of you out there as well is your distraction of focus. So I'm a focused type of person. I'm, I suck at multitasking, but when I focus, I can, I can churn and burn. Like I can get a lot of stuff done and I can have really high quality and I can really get a lot of stuff done. But if I'm thinking about two or three or four different things, I'm trying to do them one after another, I'm just going to be too distracted. So if source of thought is going to distract you from maybe doing some other things that you want to do, uh, why, why even waste your time doing it? Right? So that could be another con. Um, and you may not even hear back once you send a, a source of salt response out. So say you do these two things, you get your CAPE statement, you tailor it, you respond to the few questions that they ask you, you put that work in it, maybe it takes you half of a day, shouldn't really take more than that, maybe a couple hours tops, maybe as short of as like, you know, 45 minutes, um, you send that to them, and then you don't ever hear back. Well, that can be a little demoralizing, it can make you feel like you're climbing uphill and you're not making any traction because you're not getting any positive feedback because they don't have to respond to you just because you respond to them. Contracting doesn't have to. And those of you who have any experience know that contracting does not always respond. So, you know, kind of group them together and make it, make it sound really bad, right? You can't win a bid. It takes time. It could distract your focus. Um, mentally, it can make you feel like you're just wasting your time. And at, after all of it, you may not even hear a response back. So that is the, the cons list that I have. Um, let me jump back to the, the chat here because then we're going to get into the pros. What are some of the pros that we have to, is it really worth responding to a source of thought? Because we kind of just dogged on it a lot, spoke kind of badly about it, if you will. Um, so what do we got going on here in the chat? Uh, Vince Chris says, hello, hello. Um, Oh, I think I uh, I started too late. Vince Chris says I've submitted for a few sources. Of awesome, Chris. Glad to hear that you're um, you're doing that. And I'd be interested to know um, what was your expectation from responding to those sources. Of Vince Chris, that might be interesting to add to our conversation today. Mustafa, hello, back to you. Dana Welsh purchased your sources. Of white paper template. Great job. Thank you so much, Dana. I appreciate that. Dana is referring to the source of thought notice template that I do have on my website, govkidmethod.com. Um, I do have a, a boilerplate template where you can kind of just plug and chug your company information um, and then add in some information as it relates to the source of thought that you're responding to. It, it kind of gives you a, it's more than an outline. It's more detailed. It gives you a template to, to base off of. Yada Montreal, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you uh, supporting the channel. That's absolutely awesome. Um, I, I really do appreciate it, Yada. And thank you for showing up um, time and time again. Uh, also, Black Dog, you guys have been with, I feel like, almost all the YouTube lives. So I, I super appreciate it. Um, and I super appreciate the uh, the contribution to the channel. We have Colin says, I submitted a source thought as well, waiting on an answer if they do. Um, and, and, and Colin, thanks for adding that. Um, uh, since we're on topic here, you can always follow up. You know, I talk about marketing to contracting officers and one of the things, cause it's hard to find reasons to reach out to contracting, right? So one of the things you can do is it's all about the follow up, right? So Colin, if you, if you responded and you haven't heard back, give it, give it a couple weeks, pick up the phone or, or send a follow up email, but the phone isn't bad. Um, if you do that, it, it, now you have a reason for a call because that's what a lot of you struggle with. Well, I can reach out to contracting, but I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Well, now you have a reason. Hey, I, I s responded to source of thought notice W912JB, whatever, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I'm following up to confirm receipt to see if you had any questions about my response. Um, and do you know the procurement path forward? You know, have you guys gone through the market research yet? How are things looking? You know, these are these are all kind of fair questions. You may may or may not get answers to all of them, but um, as Colin says here, he submitted and he's waiting on an answer. And if you don't hear anything, you might not. You can always follow up. That that's fair game. Um, Yada Montreal says yes. All your templates are very helpful. 
Thank you, uh, Yana Montrell, for saying that. Um, trying to put stuff in everybody's hands that are actually um, real life things that you can use. So thank you so much. Vince says, my expectation for submitting the source of thought, okay, cool. You're gonna answer my question here, was to possibly be awarded a small share of the total project. So um, uh, Vince, Chris, you, I'm not sure what it was that you responded to, but um, you probably won't be awarded a small share of the total project if you responded to his source of thought, just because um, that is the first stage of a bid as we opened up with, and um, nothing's gonna be awarded off of this first stage. But if you're with what you're referring to, Vince, is uh, you're kind of putting your, your hat in the ring and you're, you're setting up for stage three when this job comes out, uh, you know, 60 days or in the future, six months, whenever it comes out, that you're putting your hat in the ring for that, then um, absolutely. But you, you should never be submitting pricing. This is one thing before we get to the pros, guys. Uh, this just kind of, Vince, thanks for saying this because you made me think of this. You should never share your pricing in a source of sought notice because contracting will take that pricing and they may use it against you. They may take your pricing and use that as, as their internal government uh, cost estimate, their IGE or their IGCE. And then you're kind of competing against your own pricing because that's how they may develop their own ballpark uh, figure. And you don't want to have to compete against your own pricing. So don't ever, I, I've, I've refused it, okay? So don't share pricing um, during the source of thought stage. Only, and, and if they say they require it, okay, well, I'm not responding to this. Literally, don't respond to it. Um, I, I've seen some funny stuff go on behind the scenes. And most stuff I'm pretty flexible, especially what I share with you guys. I see both sides, but uh, pricing in a uh, source of sought, don't do it. Um, unless you have like a contracting officer that's trying to do like an, a direct award or a sole source to your company and there is no other competition and they want to know like your rough, you know, your rough order of magnitude or your ROM or um, some sort of pricing ranger or whatever, or maybe a specific catalog pricing or something for your company. If that's the case, okay. But if they're going to be using your pricing uh, and competing it against and using that yours and whoever else responds, you know, whoever's unlucky enough to respond, they're going to use that against you. Don't do it. Don't give them that ammunition. Um, and, and then uh, Boki says, I haven't submitted any source of salt because it's September. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Boki, Boyan, um, what you just said is going to be something that I get into later in this video. Again, I'll repeat it. He said, I have not submitted any source of salt because it's September. I absolutely love that. And we will get into that more in the conclusion of uh, today's topic. So I don't have anything more to say about that than that because you're already getting ahead of me and I love it. So let's go ahead now, go back to the pros. Let's go over to the pros for why you would respond to the source of salt market research, even if you can't win a contract from it. It may be a distraction, feel like a waste of time, and you may not even hear back, right? So um, I touched on it. One of the, the things, the first bullet point is you help shape the requirement. So again, you know, at the very beginning of this video, we said, you know, if, if eight people, eight small business owners respond to a bid, then um, they go to stage two, right? They're, they're evaluating it. They're seeing putting it all on the table, who responded. If six out of eight of those were women-owned small businesses, there's a pretty darn good chance that it's gonna be a woman-owned small business set aside because that many responded, and really it's the rule of two during the source of sought notice stage. So one reason in favor of responding, if you're planning on bidding this thing, is that you help shape the requirement. So if all these women and small businesses, they just didn't respond, it may just be a total small business set aside where every small business, you know, can respond on it. So the pool gets much larger instead of just women and small businesses. It's everybody who's a small business, right? So if you want to help shape the requirement, that's one of the really powerful ways, you know, especially if you and a, a colleague or a, a, another small business owner that you have a relationship with, Say so you both have the same set aside, you both hub zone, you're both uh, veteran owned small businesses, whatever, eight A's. 
if you guys can team up and all respond, you know, kind of gang up on it and respond during that source of thought stage, you can get that set aside just for you guys. People, companies do this. Like there's no hiding it. It's a real strategy, right? So that's a real pro, um, whether you can do it by yourself or you want to do it with uh, several other companies and you all respond to the same thing. It can be powerful and it really can. Um, you all get on the phone, start calling contracting at the same time. I mean, it, it's amazing what can happen sometimes. So that's a really powerful, important uh, bullet point there. Um, the next thing is responding to sources sought. Unlike stage three, when the bid comes out, solicitation combined synopsis solicitation. In that stage, contracting can't talk. Everything has to be in writing. There's no open conversation because then we get into like favoritism and um, lots of bad stuff, preferential treatment. If, and then that's just if one contractor gets more information than another contractor, it's unfair. The whole thing is just, you know, a wash. The, the bid will literally be removed and have to be recompeted if something like that happens or is found out. So they won't talk to you during a, a solicitation, but they will talk to you during a source of sought. Because again, it's just market research. This is the time that they want to talk to you, right? Like they don't want to talk to you during stage three because it's too late. But during stage one, they're like, we want your feedback. We want to know what you have to hear. So if you are responding and say you even have questions for them, which I highly recommend, because now you're, you're kind of putting contracting on the back foot. And you know they don't have to do anything. But if you can ask them a question and make them think, and if you're an expert in your field, and maybe you have a better way of doing something than what you're seeing that they propose during this stage one, maybe it's doing it for less people than what they're maybe recommending or a different way. You know, if it's construction or something, you have a different methodology. Let them know. They really want to know that. And if you're the person that can bring that to them, what do you think that's going to make them think of you? Is it going to make them think like you're a professional in your field or that you're just a, you know, a nobody? Like, of course, it's, it's going to put you up on a higher hierarchy, a higher level. And it, it doesn't take much. You don't have to do pricing. You don't have to do a full-blown proposal. If you do your tailored capability statement and maybe a few paragraphs, maybe a page or something like that of meaningful information on their requirement in this early stage, it could go a really long way with them. And since they can talk about it, oftentimes they will. Now here you go about opening up the, the relationship. Now, now they're, they know you're not just some guy or some girl. Um, now they're taking your company a lot more serious and they know that you you genuinely want to earn uh, the business with the agency that they work for. So I hope that you can see, um, you know, this kind of second bullet point here, the open dialogue that has the potential to happen by responding to a source of thought. But it's only if you work it, you have to work it. Like I said, it's all about the follow up. You have to have intent. If you're just doing stuff with, with no hope uh, of getting anything back or you're just kind of submitting and waiting and you don't even have a plan, then you're, you're kind of wasting, you know, a little bit of your time. I would challenge you to believe that you could squeeze some more juice out of that lemon if you really tried. And if you decided, if you made the business decision to already invest the time to responding to this thing, I would challenge you to get the most out of it. And I would, I would say that you probably can get more out of it than what you're doing if, if you're kind of just submitting and waiting, submitting and waiting. Be proactive, okay? So um, I hope that's that's sitting well. Um, and this kind of goes to the next bullet point, guys. You can turn a cold lead, and I kind of already said this, so it's 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 like half of the same thing that I just said. But you can turn a cold lead into a warm lead for a future bid. So it's a little bit what I said, but then it's a little bit not. So if you just show up on bidding day, okay, the bid is on the street. I'm going to fill it out, put my proposal together, or just put my pricing together and, and submit it. Contracting has no idea who I, who I am. I shared no interest during the source of thought stage. This is what I call the very cold lead. You know, it's not even a lead because it's, it's you approaching them. They're not even approaching you, but it's a cold lead because um, they have no idea who you are, right? 
if you're just trying to cherry pick bids, you can do that. You can play the numbers game. Um, and like every squirrel can find a nut or like however the saying goes, like the, the law of averages and the numbers game, it's a very real thing and it is very powerful. They teach us in sales and insurance. I used to sell insurance. Um, you can literally just, you know, smile and dial all day long. But the quality of your conversations and your efforts are going to be much lower, which means they're going to have to do that much more volume, that, that much more activity, that much more output, right? If instead you're responding, you're getting in at the first stage, say it's 90 days before the bid, which is when the source of sock first comes out. If you're engaged with contracting throughout that whole 90 day period and then the bid comes out and then you respond, do you think they know you more or less? Do they think they trust your company more or less that you can actually do it? Do they think they, they like you? Who knows? Like it doesn't really matter if they like you or not. Um, but your your ability to, to develop that relationship is really based on no like and trust from a customer. People usually don't uh, give you money unless they know, like, and trust you. So uh, through that 90 day period of a source of thought, pre-solicitation and solicitation, you have an opportunity. If you're serious about this thing and you really want to win it, you have an opportunity to, to try and farm that, build a relationship, do follow up, find any reason to get in front of them, you know, ask them for referrals really any professional excuse. And I talk about this on previous lives on how to market to a contracting officer. So go ahead and check that video out um, later. If you want to, I go into some more specific tactics, um, how to market to contracting and build relationships with contracting. Um, but this is what you want to be doing during this time um, versus just showing up on bid day. You've, you've been nowhere for the last 90 days and now you're submitting your bid. Could you win? Yes. Are your chances of winning lower probably so it's all about this quantity and quality game in which you want to play i recommend you know warming up the contact before you submit a bid so that way it falls on ears you know or, or eyes or whatever you want to call it so that it lands on them a little more softly than just you know okay i'm here just bust through the door i'm here here's my bid who are you you know like, where have you been? You know, did you respond to our source of thought uh, market research? We would have loved to got your, your insight. Nope, I didn't do that. I just uh, I just responded to the bid. So pick me. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's not that extreme, but it's a little bit like that. And then um, lastly, uh, for the pros, and then we will take a break. I'll get another drink. I'll check the chat. Last thing here for the pros, um, Although it does take some time to respond to a source of thought notice, stage one, it's nothing like sometimes responding to a bid. You know, like I said, you're not doing pricing. Pricing can, you know, take a lot. Getting getting quotes from subcontractors or pricing out employees, um, it, it can take some effort. You don't have to do any of that. And you don't really have to put any sort of proposal together either. So although you have to customize a capability statement, should take 30 minutes um, and maybe do a short white paper, one page long. Is it really that bad to, to do that compared to doing a proposal? Um, depending on the opportunity that you have, it's, it's really isn't that bad. Um, sometimes it is. So uh, you, you have to kind of, you know, take that as you will. Sometimes they will want like 15 pages in a source of salt response. I just, I'll just do a quick no bid on that. And, you know, I, I kind of give you permission to do that as well. Like if you see a source of thought where they're asking for a lot of stuff or even like pricing, like I mentioned, if they're asking for that, um, this asking for a whole lot of response, it's okay to pass it. You don't have to respond to every single one, but I, I do give you um, a bit of a, not a warning, but just a, so, so that you know, if you do respond to a source of thought, you probably want to make sure you respond to the bid unless you're precluded from doing so. You know, so in our example, say you, you're not a woman in small business and they set it aside for WOSB. Okay, well, you literally cannot respond. But if you respond in stage one, source of thought, and you see the pre-solicitation and you're still in it, or even more, what's worse is I've seen, I've seen small business owners respond in stage one 
they get it set aside for their business, uh, set aside, whatever it is. And then they don't show up for the actual bid. And I've seen contracting. I've seen the emails. You responded. Why did you not submit a bid? You know, you've you've showed, uh, you know, you put an effort. You've showed intent to bid here. Um, and then you didn't bid. You kind of just messed up their whole plan. Right. So that kind of gives you a bit of an insight on how contracting thinks. They're counting on you. Right. So if they're counting on you, it means they're taking you a little bit serious. You know, if they're upset, if you're not here, that means they want you here. And I've seen that many times. So um, it, it's not a compl it's not a waste of time, guys. Don't feel like it's a waste of time. And that's that's the pro that I'm getting at here is um, like if they care about it, if you're not there after you respond, that means they do care that you're here, even though they may not be as communicative as um, as you would like them to be, as we would all like them to be. But, uh, you know, if you're responding and you have a good response and you're staying in front of them, following up the, the whole time, they, they do acknowledge you and they do appreciate you being there. They are limited in what they can do within the confines of their job, but they, they do and they do care. So, so that's it for the, the pros and the cons. So um, we have uh, Vince Chris says, uh, Source of Salt submission was not for winning a contract via Source of Salt. The submission was information only, and I had hoped to win a contract during a later phase. Okay, that's that's exactly what I thought you had meant, Vince. Um, thanks for uh, clarifying and validating that for me. Um, you're you're right on, man. You are exactly right on. Um, so keep keep doing what you're doing, um, guys. Uh, if you we're kind of halfway through here right now, I, I've got a little bit more to go through. We're going to go through the conclusion to answer this question. Um, is it really worth it? Uh, if you haven't yet, I would like to invite you, if you've gotten some value out of this video, to hit that like button. We have about seven likes right now. If we can get it up to uh, like 20, 25 likes, that would be awesome. There's 30 of us here live watching. Um, hello, all of you. If you want to hit that like button, that would be awesome. It'll help this video show up in the search results um, as we uh, go from live to replay. It, it does really help a lot. Um, and then if you're new here and if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. That's the other thing. Government contracting is all that we talk about. And there's not enough uh, government contracting channels on YouTube. And really what I'm trying to do um, and why your subscription helps is my videos do not show up uh, like the first ranked videos. A lot of people tell me, Derek, like I almost gave up searching on YouTube, but then I found your video like at the, at the end uh, of, of my search results or whatever. So, because I'm a newer channel, I really got serious about this only a year ago. Um, my channel still has a little bit ways to go. So the way that you could help is also subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet and you would like to, you don't, you don't have to, um, but that would help the videos rank in the channels as well. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if you want to help out, that's a super awesome way to help. Um, so back to the chat here, Antoine says, I'm new to all this, you have good content. Thank you for sharing. I'm slowly learning a lot from you. Antoine, thank you so much for saying that. I do appreciate it. And even more, I'm, I'm glad that um, it's starting to slowly help you out. Uh, it, it does take time. So I appreciate that you're saying slowly because uh, this stuff can't just happen in a month. Okay. It, it takes time. Literally my whole first year in government contracting, I had no idea what my job was. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, the way I explained it to my friends was like, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but it's something to do with the government. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> like that was my first year working for a government contract, how I explained my job. So slow is the key word, but um, you know, hopefully with all the content here on the channel, we can speed things up for you guys. Um, Black Dog, thank you so much um, for the, uh, for the uh, super, super chat here. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you for being honest and brutally honest sometimes, uh, says Black Dog. You are a very genuine person and I'm grateful for all your help. Thank you so much, Black Dog. Um, I do try to be genuine even to a fault sometimes and uh, as being a coach to, to you all and sometimes uh, to myself, uh, that doesn't mean always just telling people what they want to hear, right? Like if you were in the gym, and you're bench pressing, you wouldn't want your you know, personal trainer lightening the weight for you or making it easier when things get tough. Um, you would want that personal trainer to hold you accountable to get a few more reps or, or whatever. Um, so I try to take that same approach of being genuine and bold, telling um, what needs to be said 
even when it's not necessarily comfortable or what somebody wants to hear, but it's for their best interest. And uh, I take that same approach to myself. Um, sometimes I'm my own worst critic. Sometimes I'm overly mean to myself and I need to learn to treat myself more like a person. Um, and, and through working with you guys, it's been really great because I don't ever want to be you know, overly critical and I, I try to never be that way with you guys. So I'm kind of learning to kind of be that way towards myself. So it's been a really a uh, bit of a transformative thing. So Black Dog, that's that's really insightful. Thank you so much for the super chat. And I really appreciate those specific words that you that you spoke. Kimbala says, just purchase the source of salt response. I'm all in when it comes to this. This that's awesome. Thank you so much, Kimbala. Um yeah the source of salt notice response is it's pretty rock solid. It's something that I've used for quite a while and there's been a number of other people who are using that. So you will be in good hands. Thank you so much for the the purchase and um, joining us today. Vince Chris says, uh, indeed, yes. And Black Dog says, can you win a contract without having any set-asides? What is the likelihood? Absolutely, Black Dog. Um, we'll get back to rounding out the content here um, in, in just a second. Black Dog, I will uh, answer that question um, after we wrap up the, the, the topic. Um, Colin says here, uh, yes, you can. So Black Dog, yeah, I'll take a few minutes to answer that question because that's a good question. And I don't want to get it confused here with wrapping up our source of salt topic. So um, I will get back to that. But um, again, thank you. So, so guys, the, the pros and the cons, right? Let's wrap it up so we can so we can go to the chat. Um, pros and the cons. Cons. Why would you respond to a source of salt? Is it worth it? You know, you can't win a contract directly from it. it takes time to respond. It distracts your focus. Um, sometimes it does feel like a waste of time. Like I'm just responding to what source of salt. You know, it's it's like, it's not a bid. I'm not going to win. Like, why would I do this? And I'm not even necessarily hearing back from contracting, you know, like, I feel like I'm just throwing stuff into a black hole. You literally like a sane human would only do that a couple of times. And then you're like, I'm going to stop, you know, which is why it's so important to, to, if you're not getting the feedback that you take, you know, intentionality and, and do the follow-ups and things. That's why I'm putting focus on that. But then on the pros, you can help shape the requirement in terms of set asides like we talked about. And it's open dialogue. So they can't talk to you during stage three so solicitation combined synopsis, but they can and they do want to hear from you and talk with you. And if you can ask them questions, it may kind of prompt them to give stuff back to you. And now you have a give and take without them even realizing it. So I do find asking um, questions during the sources off stage to be a powerful tactic Sometimes you can also, as a pro, turn a cold lead into a warm lead instead of just busting through the door saying, you know, here I am, here, here's my bid. I know you don't know who I am, but, you know, pick me. Um, kind of working the 90 day source of thought pre solicitation and then the bid, um, working that can turn a cold lead into a warm lead. So that's a pro. And then um, it really doesn't take that much time. Lastly, I know you have to put together a response, tailor your capability statement write a one pager, white pager, whatever to respond during this early stage. Um, but if you do, uh, like, like I said, half a day at the most, a couple hours, one hour, it, it really does depend. It could go a little bit longer. All you have to do is weigh the, the risk benefit and the opportunity cost of doing this versus doing something else. And um, sometimes it's worth putting in a little bit more time and sometimes you don't want to. And if they're asking for pricing, you can just pass like we talked about. So those are those are some of the pros. Like it shouldn't take you that long. Um, so with the pros and the cons all being said now, should should we do this? Like, should we respond to source of salt? Like, what do you guys think? If you're if you're in the chat, um, let me know. Uh, should we? Yes. Should you respond to source of salt? Chat. I'm talking to you. Or or no. Is it is it not? the you know the best thing that you can do for your business because maybe you can't win an award or you know you may just be sending these off down a black hole and never hearing back again let me uh let me know what you think in the chat and i'll start talking about some of my thoughts i think and kind of my long to short answer is it's all about timing and, and uh, Boki Boyan uh, in the chat earlier referenced to this. 
he was, uh, his head is exactly where my head is at. He said, he's not doing it right now because it's September. And I agree with that. So it really depends. September, if you don't know, you should know. I know those of you who are uh, returning definitely know, but if you're new here, September is the busiest month of the year for government contracting. July, August, September is the busiest quarter. It's quarter number four. It's when the government gets all of their funding for their budgets. It's when um, multiple quarters worth of work is bid and awarded within one quarter. So it's like tax season. Good luck getting a hold of a tax accountant in April. You, you can't do it. Um, that's what's going on with government contracting over the summer, right? So uh, Boki is saying that he's not responding to sources sought during September because he's busy responding to bids. And I wholeheartedly uh, agree with that. I think you should have a, a timing and a strategy for the different business development activities that you're going to do for your business. Source of sought is one of them, but responding to bids is also one of them. If you're a hunter and it is hunting season, you shouldn't be out, you know, I don't even like hunting. I don't like hunting analogies, but you shouldn't be, you know, sharpening your, your, uh, I don't know why you would sharpen a sword to go hunting, but, uh, you know, you shouldn't be oiling your gun or, or making your arrows or whatever you hunt with during hunting season, you should have done that all ahead of time so that during hunting season, you can go out and hunt, right? And you can get as much as you can. That's what you should be doing right now. It's kind of too late to do that 90 day window, you know, in August or September, because there's a lot of bids on the street right now. So you need to be doing that source of sought approach earlier in the year. So that when the bids are, are there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of stuff on the street then you can focus on, um, you know, hunting in hunting season and then, you know, throughout the year farming during farming season. Right. So um, I, I say it all depends on your timing and your strategy. There are times where you should not be responding to source of sought notices and it's not worth it. There's something better you could be doing with your time. You could be responding to bids. Maybe you could be going to government contracting conferences. Let's recall, um, the five business development activities that you should be doing for your business. You should respond to source of sought. You should respond to bids, stage one, stage three. You should market directly to contracting officers. And I, like I said, I, I talk about how to do that in another one of the live videos. Source of sought is one of them, but there's other tactics. So market to contracting is number three. Marketing to Ozdaboos, small business offices. Um, that's number four. And then number five is GovCon conferences and not just any conference, but conferences with your targeted agencies. Those are the five things you should be doing throughout the year to market your GovCon business and, and bid on contracts. OK, if you're registered and you're saying, I don't know what to do, those are the five things. But those five things need to be done in such a way that they align with seasonality. OK, don't do the, the hunter stuff when it's winter and there's nothing to go out and hunt. You're going to starve. But some people will build a business based on hunting, 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 and they don't do any farming and then they starve. And then you don't see them around as a business any longer. So um, it's all about timing, guys. That's my answer to the um, to the, the source of thought. So let's let's check the chat here. <clears throat> Rose says your content is very beneficial. I'm new here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose, for being here. Uh, Colin's answer was yes, always respond to sources of worst case scenario, the agencies have our contact info. Sure. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Um, Mustafa says, can we ask the monetary value? I'll, Mustafa, I'll get back to your question. Just seeing if there's anything else about, um, sources. Well, yours is about sources. Thought. Okay. Mustafa said, can we ask the monetary value of the solicitation contract in the source of soft phase? Um, you could ask if they have a, a range, which is called a rough order of magnitude, a ROM. Um, but honestly, yeah, you could. I feel 50-50 about it. I've done it. They just don't always give you an answer. So Mustafa, uh, yes, you can ask it. It's an okay question to ask. Um, Black Dog says it's a great way to network. It is. It's a great way to put your feelers out there. So that is, as we discussed in the pros, I totally agree, Black Dog. Um, it's, it's a way to, to network. Um, 
Kim Bullough says, I'm getting a list of sources sought together now. I'm willing to take contracts that no one else wants to get my feet wet. That's that's kind of the, the way to do it. Um, literally, sometimes, Kim Bullough, there are contracts and everybody that they don't receive responses to. It happens. It still happens. I can't believe it. Contracting will put a thing out, a bid out, and they will receive no responses. Could be too small, could be too niche, too unique. So if you find something that you think might be rare that nobody's going to be interested in, feel free if it fits your GovCon business model. See, I mean, see, see what happens. Um, it is a strategy. Uh, Yada agrees. It's a, a networking opportunity as well. Um, and then Chris says, trying to get uh, tech docs. So Chris, I'll, I'll come back to your, your question also um, once we round up and wrap this up. So guys, that's that's kind of my answer. It depends on the timing. Those five activities to what you should be focused on throughout the year, October through September, um, and you need to find the right timing for you, the right, the right mix, the right BD mix, business development, activity mix. Okay, what am I gonna do in January? What am I gonna do in February? Literally in uh, October, you should plan out your year. You should break down the activities that you're gonna focus on and, and, and kind of blend them and change them, ramp them up for each month throughout the year. Each So write down all the 12 months and say, I'm gonna focus on this for this month. And then I'm gonna focus on this and this, then I'm gonna change to focusing on this. Guys, I'm, I'm creating something um, that's gonna kind of show you how I would go through it. It is going to be a, a paid program. It's kind of gonna be my one thing that I'm leaning everything into. So I've been teasing it a little bit on these lives, but I am creating something that will take you through these five uh, activities, show you how to do them specifically, give you um, more templates, scripts, like very specific details. Um, I do plan to release it uh, the beginning of next year, but with all this move and everything, um, I'll probably have time to finish it in November and December. So uh, early 2021, I will be creating a program that will take you guys through exactly what to do for your year. Um, and also there'll be a, a community just for that, for only people that are participating in that thing so that you don't have to worry about people, you know, being in the community that are not participating. It would only be for those. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, I'd be curious to see if that's something you would be interested in. It will be a paid program. Um, but yeah, I'm just teasing that, letting you guys know with everything else I have going on, that is a big project that I've been working on for the last couple months, uh, really since the beginning of summer, um, that I will be rounding out by the end of the year. So kind of what we're talking about right now at the end of this session, uh, blending it throughout the year, that's what it's going to have to do with. So I can tell you that much and I will give you more uh, details on that as we get closer. So let me come back to the chat, guys. That's it for the topic. If you want to stay or, uh, stick around for the chat, um, we're going to get some more questions. I got probably about 10 minutes with you guys. So let's see what we can get through. And Black Dog, I believe I, I left off with you. So um, I don't want to miss your question. Can you win a contract without having any set, any set asides? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. In short, um, you absolutely can. Uh, there's something called the total small business set aside that applies to every small business. So if you don't go out and you get your hub zone or your woman owned or your 8A or you're not, you know, if you're not able to get those like me, you know, I'm a white guy. I never served. Um, not in a hub zone. Like I couldn't get any of those. Uh, I could still bid as a total small business and win small business set aside contracts. Um, I just, if something was marked specifically 8A or specifically woman owned, I wouldn't be able to bid on it. So I hope that, um, answers the question. It's pretty, uh, pretty black and white question to answer. So, and, uh, Colin says, uh, yes, uh, I have no set asides also, um, and that, that yes, you can. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the answer. Um, it's a pretty solid answer. So what else do we have for questions? Uh, Mustafa said, can we ask the monetary value? I did already answer that. So um, hopefully that helped you out. Uh, Chris, Chris P. It said, I'm trying to get tech docs on DLA dibs. I need to make a new uh, 
username and password for C folders. I've called the service desk twice and they aren't giving me the answer. What do I do? Chris, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I'm trying to get tech docs on DLA dibs. I need to make a new username and password for, for a C folders and they aren't giving me the answer. What do I do? Um, I don't, I need more more context. And to be honest, I'm not a, a whiz with uh, the DLA dibs. Um, I, I imagine they've got to have a help desk, but that's, that's what you're saying. You're calling, you've called them twice and they're not giving you an answer. Um, I guess I would need a little bit more context because I'm not sure what you're talking about for a C folder. Um, so yeah, um, I can't say too much more about that right now. Uh, Boki says, can you talk more about filling out a SF1449? Do you have to fill out other blocks besides what it says in the top left corner? Sometimes blocks 19, 21, 22, and 23 are not filled in by the contracting officer. So um, Boki, Bok yeah, uh, I actually do have a, in my course on govkidmethod.com, it's how to read and respond to a bid. Um, I do show you the blocks that you need to fill out, but I can tell you, um, I don't remember the block numbers from memory, but all that you have to fill out on the SF1449, which is the first and second page of uh, RFPs. Sometimes, sometimes agencies will use the 1449. Sometimes they'll use the 1442. Sometimes they won't use any form. So uh, every bit is different. And that's what I always say. But for the 1449, you have to um, print your name, you have to sign your name, you have to put your company name and address, you have to put your company phone number, and you have to put the date where the um, next to your signature. Those are the only blocks that you need to fill out. So like I said, I don't know the exact block numbers, but that's all the information you have to put in a 1449. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, but again, I do have that course. And I do believe I mark in red literally the block, the boxes that you have to fill out um, on the website, govkidmethod.com, reading and uh, responding to bids. Uh, I do have a, a download that shows you that. <clears throat> I hope that helps, uh, Boki. Uh, Black Dog says, does it happen for staffing? Um, Black Dog, let me know what you're referring to, Black Dog. Uh, does what happen for staffing? TJ John says, I would definitely be interested in that program. You already have giving us so much quality for your information. Thank you for your books. Hey, TJ, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the feedback. Um, TJ is re referring to the uh, the course, or it's really more of a program that I'm gonna be uh, coming out with at the beginning of the next year. So thanks for that feedback. I, I do appreciate that. It's something I'm really excited about and I'm putting my all into. So yeah, we do have uh, Yada Montreal saying, I'm interested in the program. Awesome, thank you, Yada Montreal. Thank you so much for that. And thanks for sticking around every week. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, Mustafa says, thanks for the info. Absolutely. And uh, yes, from Alicia Curtis as well, being interested. Very cool. Um, and Vince says, uh, Chris, you need to submit a form for clearance. Let me see. Oh, okay. So thanks for uh, answering Chris's question, Vince. Um, yeah, it looks like you guys are uh, answering that. So if we don't have any other questions, guys, um, that's going to be it for me. I'm, I'm okay with uh, cutting it right at the hour mark. Um, we've done a few lives where we went like almost two hours. So I'm literally in the middle of packing. So um, I do hope this was helpful to you. Again, if you haven't hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing, GovCon is all that we talk about. Our topic today was, is responding to source of thought notices really worth it? We talked about the pros, the cons. And, um, you know, our kind of conclusion type answer is, it depends on your timing and your strategy. As, as, as Boki says, uh, he's not doing it right now because it's September and he's, he's busy bidding. But I bet that he plans to respond to source of thoughts during other times of the year where things are um, a little bit slower. Uh, Boki says, thoughts on reverse bidding site. Some agencies like using it. So yes, um, I, I, I did talk about um, Unison Marketplace. So Unison Marketplace is the reverse bidding site that Boki is referring to. And um, it's, it depends. I, I, let me know if I talked about, I'm, I'm getting him confused because I was just on the Facebook Live before this. Let me know if I, if I answered the, the question on Unison Marketplace um, on the YouTube Live. If not, I will uh, answer it again. Um, but yeah, Boki just, it really in short and in a nutshell, my thoughts on reverse bidding, uh, so I had a uh, website called Unison Marketplace. 
This is where reverse auction, reverse bidding happens. My thoughts on it is if you're going to build a GovCon business and something related to those items that you can bid on in Unison Marketplace, commodity items, goods, products, if you're going to do a related business like construction, facilities, uh, freight, transportation, logistics, something that can at least relate, it can be a good way to build past performance and get some small level contracts. But if you're going to build like a staffing business or some other professional services based business that doesn't relate at all to the items you're going to be bidding on in a reverse bidding auction, um, I don't recommend doing it because it's not congruent to what your business strategy is. So the real answer is um, it depends on what your business model is. It could be good or it might not be a fit. That's really my, my short answer. Um, oh, Black Doc says, does it happen where no one responds to a bid for staffing? You know, um, it's an interesting question. It, it could happen. I mean, obviously, I don't know every bid that's gone out there. It's not typical that I see somebody not or I see contracting not receive any bids for staffing because staffing is, I mean, it's fairly competitive, right? It's probably happened though, but more so what I was referring to is, is maybe more uh, product and good based where just they'll get no bids for that. So um, that's kind of more what I was referring to, but it, it, Black Dog, it's interesting, right? Like it's an interesting question to ask. And honestly, like, I think it's a really good insightful type question. And again, with following up with contracting, building relationships, if you ever get to get in front of one of them or on the phone, and you're looking for a question to ask to keep the, the conversation going. I think it's really insightful question to ask, hey, do you ever just get, you know, put a bid out and you get no responses? Or, or you know, do you, you know, get people responding to source thought notices and then they don't respond in the bid stage and then you're kind of left hanging? It's an insightful question that I think contracting might appreciate. Um, so it's kind of a feather to put in your cap, Black Dog, to, uh, you know, something that you can fall back on. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting question that is speaking the language that contracting speaks because that's their world. So now you're talking to them in their world. They're going to be more, you know, open to speaking about stuff like that too. So, um, Boki says, thanks. That's, that answers my question. Perfect. Um, I'm glad that that helps Boki. And then Vince says, uh, okay, it looks like Vince and Chris, you guys, thank you so much, uh, Vince and Chris, uh, for, Vince helping Chris out with the, the question that I wasn't able to uh, address. Um, I don't want to cut you guys off from the chat, but um, we'll, we'll conclude the, the session here in just a second in case you guys want to connect off because I know you're, you're kind of um, figuring this out. So um, feel free to you know come to the Facebook group or something if you want to uh, continue talking or you know however you guys want to keep talking if you want to. I just don't want to cut you short on the chat here. But uh, thank you so much for joining um, today's session. I'm going to call it here. I literally have to get back to putting a couch in a truck trailer. <laughs> um, my dad's here. He's waiting for me. So, guys, thank you so much. This is the seventh consecutive YouTube Live. I think I want to do something cool for number 10. Hopefully, we can get there, kind of make a big deal out of it. If you have any ideas, um, you know, add those in the, in the comments after this video is over. I'll check those. If you have any cool ideas to do with number 10, um, once we get there to celebrate a small milestone, uh, I think that might be cool. So hope you found this helpful um, as it relates to answering today's topic. Is it, is it worth responding to source saw notices? You have the answer. I'll see you guys in the Facebook group and I'll see you next week, hopefully next Friday. Stay tuned for the exact date. Um, should be the same time though. I'll see you then. Bye.